Hello everyone and welcome to uh, another video on bone loving. Uh, my name is Dr. Jerry Cuomo and I wanted to go over uh, this particular case that I just received from the periodontist, a local periodontist, and basically what you're seeing right now is the impression with the transfer copings that I designed for this case. Simple design but one that works very effectively. I have one of the lab analogs right now. Um, let me back up. This is a Strauman bone level case and uh, this is their analog. It's an RC color-coded magenta. Put that in place and we're going to go ahead and tighten that up and the reason why I'm giving you this video and for those who have, have called in and have written about the difference between a tissue level and a bone level uh, type of uh, implant and also the use of a surgical stent. This particular case brings out a number of issues. Um, what you're looking at right now is an open tray and um, we'll ask the lab to go ahead and pour these up so I wanted to show you what that's all about. Now the first model is already poured and what we have done in this particular case is place the plastic CrossFit, RC CrossFit uh, plastic. Uh, these are actually, will mimic the uh, abutments that Strauman sells online. Let me show you the kit now where you can obtain these these uh, try-in regular CrossFits, uh, I guess they call them. These are the associated numbers I happen to select out of the kit. Uh, a D5, AH, 5.5, GH1, and it's associated GH2. So the, the gingival height is telling you that uh, we're they're giving us about a millimeter gingival height from the uh, uh, from I would say from the end of the abutment so one's a little bit longer than the other now what you'll find online are these meso abutments which coincide to the abutment that's uh, that's actually in the kit. So there's your meso abutments that you can select. Some of them are angled. So a little less are expensive to go with the meso abutments uh, versus a custom abutment. So meso abutments, sometimes they work well, sometimes they don't. Let's find out if it works well with this case. I'm right at now, I'm right at the time where you want to look at your wax up. So we selected two ion crowns, placed a little white wax underneath, finished the model, and went ahead and made sure that we were close to the occlusion that we wanted. All right, so in this particular case, I probably still have to drop the occlusion down a little bit more on the molar, but just to get an idea. Uh, due to finances, she does not want to have this upper bridge replaced, so it's basically an edentulous area on the lower right. Took a, an impression of the wax up, made an omnivax, and popped two holes in the top so that I can see down. So this omnivax simulates a surgical stent. Now to remind you again, the surgeon did not elect to use a surgical stent. And now we're looking at the particular angles of which, as, uh, which we have as an end result. Now a couple of things that I see right away when I do place the surgical stent is angulation. And here in between the teeth I'm noticing the embrasure and I'm going to also notice that this embrasure space is too far toward the first bicuspid so we're going to need something angled in here. Uh, with the molar, I'm also looking at some angulation issues. Um, 
right about here is where the screw hole should come up if we were doing screw retained and here as well so we are over to the occlusal aspect with our Omnivac and we are going to definitely need to have an angled abutment so you can either choose from their meso abutments um, or you can go ahead and make a custom we're going to do a combination we're going to do a custom abuts on both I'm going to make them singles and we're going to probably end up shaving a little bit off of this crown on the distal aspect so that we can get better alignment with both so that's that's where we are with this case the cost differential for us here is probably you know you're looking at uh, just cost uh, differential and the parts um, yeah, you're roughly about twenty dollars difference, and then um, and then laboratory costs are going to be up more because you're going to have to introduce more metal with the custom abutment. And um, another place to look at would be Atlantis, and I believe their abutments are uh, a little more reasonable on that. So there are your options. Uh, again, maybe a surgical stint in this case would have helped the case. Um, we're looking at a distance definitely greater than three millimeters in between each of these two. Uh, you need a not as much room distal to first uh, first by cuspid, so maybe this implant could have been moved over and placed more upright, so that it would have made my life a little easier when I'm restoring the case. So move this one in a little bit toward the mesial as well as uh, uh, 29 and then gone with two units that are more upright. So for you restorative dentists out there you can see uh, you know you have your options certainly um, try to get with your surgeon though before the case is started uh, and uh, work it out work it out wax it up work it out tell them where you want it this happened to be just the opposite. The surgeon had the case and uh, he went ahead and placed the two implants without the surgical guide. And um, so do your homework first, all right? I hope this has helped uh, some of you that are just starting out with the uh, Strauman uh, bone level implants and have made it a little more easy to understand. Uh, my goal here is to, to try to give you as much information about uh, platform switching or as was with uh, Strauman calls their bone level. As you can see uh, also the the tissue is so much more easy to use and, and have your lab develop a, the proper emergence profile. All right. Any questions just feel free to write in and let me know uh, your thoughts. It's just a generalized uh, case here with bone level and uh, do feel free to comment at any time. Uh, Dr. Jerry Cuomo and uh, keep working with bone level. It is the way of the future. Take care.